The following program is rated PG and contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Even though the last residential school in Canada closed just 25 years ago, the terrible trauma for Indigenous people has lingered for generations. Now a new film is diving into the impact decades of damage has had on mental health, community and culture. The film is called Runs Through Their Blood, A Life Impacted. Joining us are producer Angela Kajajuan, director and writer DJ Payette, and writer Isabel Langendoon. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And first, I just want to congratulate you for making such an incredibly moving portrait of intergenerational trauma, of language, of culture, and quite frankly, of pain. So I want to start with why this film was so important for you to make. And Angela, you can start. When we were putting together this uh, idea, really, uh, we, we all wrote it together. Uh, literally, it was because nobody was talking about it. Like, literally, it's not a conversation that people have every day. And the thing is, the idea of the thing that was bothering us, I think, was the, the 215 in Kelowna. Um, it was like the whole world woke up. And it's like, but we were just like, but this has been happening for so long. Uh, you know, I, I, wanted, I want to talk about the bad, but I also want to talk about the good. And there is definitely a journey through this film of characters sort of reclaiming their power. And June, one of your interviewees, says she's still learning to walk in balance. And I loved that. And I would love for someone to explain what she's referring to, because I think that is a lesson for everyone watching. What does she mean by walk in balance? I think, really, it's something that we all, I think, have to deal with um, as Indigenous people and as Indigenous youth, young people, professionals. I don't even know if I should call myself a youth, but <laughs> um, but it's the idea of walking in both worlds. So it's walking in being indigenous, knowing who you come from, knowing your language, knowing your medicines, knowing your food, knowing your family, and then also being able to come in to Toronto <laughs> and do some interviews yeah. and be able to, you know, function both ways, go to school, uh, learn other, you know, there's, we, we all have to deal with that as Indigenous people here, is that we are always walking in both worlds. Mm -hmm. So we have to honour both sides. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we're... We're, we're getting there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Slowly. It's getting better every generation. <laughs> that's the one thing about intergenerational trauma. There's also, in, like, good things that come from it. Mm -hmm. There's some mm -hmm. very strong, resilient traits that the indigenous people have like we are, are getting stronger and stronger through each generation yeah. as well and i feel like the more we talk about it too the more people see the problems and are like oh we can start fixing this now that we know what the issues are like for me i didn't know but now that i do know i can change it and mm -hmm. another thing that really inspired me was so after i made this film my mom she like she told me her like her story, which because of the film, and it was it was very like emotional for me because she wouldn't have told me this if we didn't make the documentary. So it just proves that like that there's like we can start healing from this and like healing our children and like not passing on this intergenerational trauma that's been lasting so long and it's, it's it's very like empowering i like the change i like that it's changing yeah, yeah. <laughs> our our culture specifically the anishinaabek culture the three of us teaches about the medicine wheel and everybody's on that wheel <laughs> okay yeah. good like point this. all the colors yeah ah. exactly like that oh that is beautiful yeah <laughs> I want to talk about the Film Institute. So you would not be here uh, were it not for Wingushk Film Institute. Mm -hmm. I did my best there. Wingushk. Wingushk. Yeah. Wingushk. Yeah. Wingushk. 
What is WFI and what role has it played with like indigenous community building and uh, you know keeping the culture alive? Well, I know uh, our mentor there, uh, Shirley, she uh, is actually a warrior herself from the residential schools and she's all about the uh, rehabilitation, healing and everything and what she tries to do is try to bring people in for land-based training where we actually get to go out in the land, learn about our medicines, mm. just learn about healing and fixing ourselves and like yeah there may be a lot of times that are tough but you can still make it through just Look at nature. You don't have to do anything. Like I know a lot of people get bored and just sit in that bush. Just look at those trees. Just breathe in that air. Everything is so much more healing. Plus, and you also get to go out and film a lot of things, make your own short film. But uh, due to COVID, we weren't able to make that film. But uh, there's a lot of opportunities with Wing Gush, and I strongly, strongly recommend anybody to go there. I have never been so happy. Everybody that knows me knows I've been the most negative person all my life. I was screaming my head off, hurt myself. I didn't care, and now I just I want to be happy. Mm. All thanks to Wing Gush. All thanks to my mentor. Wise words, wise, wise words, and a beautiful film. So thank you so much. Thank you to Angela and DJ and Isabel for being here and for sharing, because it isn't easy to get into it um, in front of television cameras as well, so thank you.